Good afternoon. Welcome to Ping Me, high performance communication in gaming. Uh, I've been extremely lucky over the last two years to be able to deliver this panel at other conventions, uh, both anime and video game and even professional development conferences. Uh, and I'm really excited to show you this most polished form. I'm here because I want to teach you something. I'm hoping that one hour from now, you'll be able to walk out the door a better, more equipped communicator than when you walked in. Maybe you're here because you just needed to sit after opening ceremonies. Or maybe you just want some endpoints. Or maybe you're actually genuinely interested in what I have to say. Thank you. Whatever reason you have for being here, I'm grateful. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about. First things first, a little bit of an introduction to let you get to know me, and I can establish some credibility. Also drink some water. Then into the real meat of what we're going to talk about. A communication model that will, with any luck, change the way you think and act uh, in games and in the world. Once we understand how communication works, we're going to take a look at a few examples from a couple of different games that I've never played. So I'm hoping some of you play and can understand what's going on, because I've never played Apex. And finally, as promised in the description, if you have one, we're going to have an optional interactive exercise uh, called the Ugly Orange. If you've already done it before, I just ask you, no spoilers. about me. My name is Dano, and you've never heard of me. There's no reason you should have ever heard of me. I'm not a YouTuber or a Twitter personality. I don't even work in the video games industry. But I am a gamer, have been for a very long time, and I'm passionate about how people connect with each other, both in my profession as a systems engineer, connecting systems and aircraft with internet. And it's just something that I've always studied and found curious. Nice to meet you. Let's get to it. Going off the panel description in Guidebook, you might think that today I'm going to teach you why your healer has a grudge against you, or how you're going to be the next MVP in your FPS match. And how to get your drive through order right, because I did promise that. But why not any form of communication? Why not between you and a partner, between you and a friend, you and your boss, you and your router, whenever you're trying to troubleshoot something? I'm going to teach you how any and all communication works, and when it doesn't work, why? What even is high performance communication, you ask? Somebody definitely asked. So let's do Webster's Proud and try to define it. It's comprised of two aspects. The first is functional communication. This is the communication that you are going to see or are more familiar with if you watch esports. It's that very truncated, punctuated communication uh, that you see in competitive gaming uh, whenever somebody's saying, hey, let's take a look at the comms. It's transactional. It is in advance of an objective. And it's characterized by the speed, utility, which we're going to define further on, and the impact that it has as you're going on in your game or on your mission or towards your objective. The second aspect is immersive communication. How engaged are you? How connected do you feel with the other person that you're talking to or audience that you're talking to? It's not exactly uh, the opposite. They're not mutually exclusive in any way. But immersive is characterized by a few different things. Uh, 
perceived depth? Do you feel connected with the other person? How, uh, how are the exchanges? Are there clumsy handoffs whenever you're speaking with each other, or are they harmonious? And an emotional investment. That's the kind of thing that you see still in games, but maybe a bit more like VR chat. And just this photo came from uh, the New York Times. There was a New York Times article about VR chat, and um, that's our guy, WT Snacks, that's going to be playing at the DJ battle on Friday. The model itself. It's comprised of actors, objects, and actions. Start with the most basic, the most fundamental one, the actors. There are two, a sender and a receiver. Today, I'm the sender, sending a message to you. Whether you intend to or not, you're also sending a message to me with your eye contact, body language, whether or not you're bored and playing Genshin. This is not uh, the kind of thing where you're always one role. In exchanges, you are frequently both. But to illustrate it on the model, there is a sender and a receiver. There are three objects in the communication model. We're going to cover the first two. Come back around for the third. The first object is the message. It's the expression itself that the sender is pushing out. It's the images that you're seeing, the content of the communication. The channel is the method by which the message is transmitted. Me speaking to you is delivering the, the message on an audio channel. The visual is a different channel, even though I'm saying the same thing or we're describing the same things. Now, I did say that functional communication has this um, feature called utility. Forgive me. Both messages and channels have utility to them. And what does that mean? So let's start with message utility. That can be described as a measure of a message's uh, relevance, accuracy, and actionability. If you get an email from Domino's for an ex with an expired coupon for a salad, that's not a very high utility message because no one orders a salad from Domino's. If you get a text saying that your really hot, delicious pizza is on the way, though, that's a more high utility message. You're going to know that, hey, maybe I need to do something about that. And just like messages have utility, channels also have utility. And it describes how suitable a channel is for carrying a message. Now, I'm going to describe to you my favorite salad. It is full of kale and spinach and onions. It's got a tomato-based uh, dressing, which I'm a fan of. Uh, I'm a sucker for cheese, so I load that thing up with cheese. But I am watching my carbs. So I don't put in a lot of croutons, I just kind of put one really big crouton. That was me describing my favorite salad. Here's a picture of it. <laughs> different types of messages are better suited for different channels. Think about why people say the book is better than the movie. And before we get to the last object, let's talk about the actions. Each actor is responsible for one action. The sender is responsible for encoding. And the receiver is responsible for decoding. Encoding is the packaging of the message. It's the fonts, the color choices, the words that I'm choosing, uh, the language that I'm speaking. If I were to start speaking in Spanish, which my Spanish is terrible, but maybe I could try. I won't. But if I did. I can't guarantee that everybody would understand. There's an expectation that everybody's speaking English around here. And decoding is unpacking that message, ideally, with a gaining an understanding. Now, the sender and the receiver both bear responsibility here, but it is an asymmetric responsibility. 
the larger burden falls on the sender to encode the message in a way that can be more easily or rapidly decoded. It's not what you say, it's what the other person hears. That doesn't absolve the receiver of all responsibility though. They also have a responsibility and theirs is to assume positive intent. Positive intent is sort of a primer for the decode function. And it's the assumption that if the sender is, you trust them, they're honest, and that they're doing the best they can to send you the message, you're going to understand that message as truth. If there is no assumption of positive intent, you've broken the fundamental trust. And it doesn't matter how perfectly crafted that message is or how perfectly selected that channel was to send the message. It won't get through. And there is one more object that I mentioned because I said there were three, the first two being the message in the channel. You tell me, what's the third one? There may or may not be endpoints. There are, somebody shout one out, give me something. I hear murmuring, give me one confident shout. Response, okay. Not quite, because we said that even though this model is like depicted as linear, you're always simultaneously both the sender and the receiver. Kind of the same thing with uh, that, that there's a sender and a receiver and you might be acting as both. Sort of a meta message thing within the decoding. Oh yeah, I forgot I had this part. This is, the, this is why encoding is important. It's that, let's eat grandma. Now the third object is noise. Noise is external stimuli acting on the channel that compromises its ability to carry the message. Now, this is one of my favorite things to, uh, to illustrate. This side of the room for about 10 seconds, talk amongst yourselves. The reason I use salad is because it's funny and pizza is better, right? Was that a horn? <laughs> so here's the point I wanna make. Even though I'm communicating with this group of people, the message was obstructed by noise. But what was the noise? It was someone else's message. Noise is not always bad, but in good communication, it must be mitigated, controlled, or accounted for. That's the model. So let's talk about a few failure modes. The first one is an encode failure. This is where the sender fails to encode the message in a way that can be decoded. I'm reasonably certain everyone here has gotten into an argument with someone and they said, well, that's not what I meant. The second failure mode is a decode failure, the inverse. And this is when the receiver does not have that assumption of positive intent. It breaks the fundamental trust. The communication's not gonna get through. And the third one that I wanna talk about is a really interesting one that I, that I only really started to, to play around with in this model, and I, I call it an engagement failure. When you're in a social situation and you're talking to someone and have you ever had it where the conversation just kind of runs dry or it gets stale or you feel kind of like, ugh, is this ever gonna end? Sometimes that's okay because you have nothing left to say or you don't wanna hear what the other person has to say. But if you're 
trying to be invested in the communication, in the conversation. You need to learn how to communicate in a meaningful way. What did you have for lunch today? Tell me something, make something up. You had a roast beef sandwich. I had pizza. See what he did there? He said, did you share, dude, can you share? That's what you said, right? The whole point is, sometimes the best response you can give isn't an answer to someone. Sometimes it's silence. Sometimes it's a question. If your response was, I had a roast beef sandwich, and I say, I had pizza, cool. Where does that let the conversation go? Dead air. But if you engage with someone, you ask them questions, maybe you don't care that I had pizza, but I want to know more about this roast beef sandwich. Was it toasted? Do you want to take me there later? <laughs> and that's, how a, that's a better way of connecting with people. Congratulations, you've all passed Communications 100. Now that we've seen what the model looks like from an abstract, let's take a look at it in a few games. Important to note, obvious disclaimer, being a better communicator isn't going to make you an MLG caliber player overnight. Skill still matters. But between two players or two teams of comparable skill, the better communicators will always have an edge. So first we're gonna look at uh, two teams from the same tournament in Apex Legends, a game I've never played because Titanfall 2 is better. <laughs> Do we have audio? Uh-oh. Forgive me. Technical things. Let's try this again. Watching. All right. I got my blue. Nice. Might be shot. Fighting Lava City over here. Yes. Met up shot. Straight yeah, through the door. You look, you look. There's no stance completely still. Yeah, I know, I know. I've had a flatline every game, but this team I have a fucking havoc as my secondary. I still have a bolt. Do you want to be needed purple shotty bolt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sauce needs it. He's getting an angle that Gibby. Here's, I can give it to you. Okay. I'm playing behind this rock, and I'm gonna start looking at this Gibby. He's like right here, I think. Him playing that's actually kind of whack for us. Yeah, it is whack. Yeah, look there, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't know what's going on. I just see Gibby in the bubble in the open. We did our best with the subtitles. We tried. <laughs> I don't know. I've never played Apex, forgive me. Same tournament, different time, but same tournament, uh, different, set of, different set of players, different team. Fox, Aaron, again. How much lighter mode do you have, Max? Give me a cost of call it out, 300. Give me, give me uh, 60. If you see a cost of call it out, I need I to. Hear pad, I hear your pad. I'm trying to look to break it. Right I don't see it. I don't see it. We have to watch the south. The south is most priority. I think we have default stairs right now. Tom, Tom, do not do not overextend. Tom, yeah. look, what's on north and west? Brandon, stay south. is looking to push us. South Brandon, is looking to push us. on south. I'm holding okay. stairs, okay? You let us know if you need us. Yep. Tom, keep looking for kills on north northwest. Because okay. you're going to have rotations on the, on the north end. Or on the west end, actually. Tunnel those kills. There's an octane looking south for us. There's an octane looking south. I'm going to... Okay, this is weird. Looking west. Hey, yo, they've got They've got Shoot him! 30 on Valk! They have caustic? They might try and drop. So, I think so, I think so. I have level 14. Play default stairs. Play default stairs. I'm playing wide, because if they have caustic, we, they do what okay. we just did. Okay. There's okay. barely a bubble on me, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard. They have caustic, they have caustic. Give me 70. Bubble on me. Bubble on me, bubble on me, bubble on me, bubble on me. Get ready for the fight, get ready for the fight. I'm gonna gas their outside if yes, they yes, land yes, on the yes, roof. Yes, 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 yes. I need play on me, play on me, play on the height, play on the height. They're up, they're up, they're on the roof! Uh, I need to, I need to, I need to drop They bubbed, they bubbed. Play me, 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 play me. I'm gas, 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 gas! I'm getting them out. I use gas nade on them. They bubbed. 
We have to look for damage on them. I'm gassing them. I'm healing. I'm healing. Play my shield. Play my shield. Play my knockdown. Another Gibby ult. Be careful. No. Above us. Above us. Above us. Drop, Tom. Just play your life and drop. I have no idea what was going on. <laughs> but we can. Because now we're all experts in communication. We can dissect a little bit of what we just saw. Were those scenarios exactly comparable? No. But we can kind of pick them apart, see what we can learn. First point I want to make is uh, the, the choices that were used when encoding. In the first clip, I'm, I know I'm asking you to remember something that you just saw a minute ago that maybe had no material to you, but try to remember. There were two points in which uh, players from Team Renegade said, over here. Cool. Where's here? I don't know. Now, they did do something else to, to complement that. We'll come back to it, but compare that over here to uh, Liquid using the cardinal directions, especially when that information is already available to you as the other player. If I say, look south, that minimizes the amount of work that I, the person listening to, have to decode in order to understand. Chatter and noise. The first one, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of chatter, but there also wasn't a whole heck of a lot of utility in their messages. It was kind of just banter more than anything. Sure, there was some, but it wasn't particularly useful. But they didn't occupy the channel. Compare that to liquid. Different scenario, I get it. Very noisy, very active. Not impossible to keep track of, but more difficult. It's the repetition. My goodness. If you tune out now, the one thing I want you to learn in gaming is repetition is the bane of high performance communication. Repetition is the bane of, that's the joke. <laughs> Why is it so bad? Because when you're saying bubble on me, 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 no one else gets the chance to use that channel to express something else more useful. It's the game example of what we just expressed here, where this side of the room was talking, and I was having trouble talking to this side of the room. Renegades did say over here, but they did something else too. Dropped a little ping. They used two different channels to express the same information. I love that. I think that's cool, especially as like a communication nerd. That to me is, is super cool. And it's very much what's happening here. I'm speaking to you. Maybe you're reading this. We're getting the same information out. Using, if repetition is the bane of high performance communication, redundancy is the blessing. It also makes it more difficult. As the sender, it's more work for you to do. Is it always necessary? I don't know. That's kind of up to you. You're going to learn as you play. I've also never played World of Warcraft, but I have known other people to play World of Warcraft. Have you ever played in a pickup group? Uh, has it ever gone well in a pickup group? Not, 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 uh, meh. Has it ever gone disastrously? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So this is a pickup group. I want you to keep that in mind while they, uh, while they execute here. All right, stay focused guys. Um, what I need your help is so if I call your name to break, get ready to break it. Make sure you guys are also doing a second pot during the inferno. Kill the doomfire, move barricade to the left. All right, tank switch, get ready to kill the death caller. A little flame in five. Three, two, one, let's move. Beautiful stance. Spread off a trampoline. If it's a hunter or a mage, let them do it themselves. Doomfire coming out in five on the right side. Here comes trampoline. Barricade, it's right in the middle, guys. Get back onto purple. Stack up back onto purple. Kill the Doomfire Spirit on the right, make sure melee you're not um, getting hit in the fire. 
Allure in five. Get back onto purple. Let's grab an orb before we move. Allure in three, two, one. Let's move. I've never played World of Warcraft. Somebody tell me how that went. Looked good to you? Organized. With, with, the, with the handicap that it is a pickup group. The calmest. That was the calmest raid leader you ever heard. That's, uh, that's, I mean, that's not surprising, but that's also, that's pretty cool. So I'd like to spend, uh, or send a special thank you to a friend that I made uh, about a year ago. His name is Dan to Dan. At one point, he was the eighth ranked paladin in the world. And we just met up in a bar at one point and, uh, oh man, did I lose it? Uh-oh. Is it on stream still? Uh-oh. This is considered, okay, what kind, actually, pop quiz, what kind of failure is this? <laughs> Channel failure. Where is my redundancy? Okay, we just tried unplugging and plugging it in again. We might need one. Um, Uh-oh. It's going to be up there, I think, because it's, it's definitely coming through off the laptop. And we, and we did say that it's coming out on stream. The laptop is detecting the display is still there. Wow. Come on. Why is this going? Or why is this not going? Okay. Well... Uh, okay. Unexpected technical failure. Something that I wish I didn't have to uh, contend with. Did it go out right at the end of the video? It right. got there. And then it went out. Okay. Okay, it's detecting that something is plugged in, which uh -huh. is good. Ah, oh, there we go. Something? Nothing? Well, while we get someone troubleshooting, thank you, by the way. Not a problem. Hey! Take oh. it! Dude, Windows, I hate you so much. All right, well, I'm going to try to remember. Dan to Dan was an uh, eighth ranked paladin in the world, and uh, that was he walked me through a few of the things that went really, really well in that. I think he said there were seven different guilds participating in that pickup group. Uh, we definitely need someone. This is so the projector looks uh, a bit hosed. Do we have mag technical here? Uh, do we have tech ops in the room? Shit. Okay. I'll go and put out something on this uh, slide. Okay. I'm gonna try really hard because the show must go on, right? Woo! Sign of a good presenter. Minimum side talk. How many people were speaking in that clip? One, the raid leader, and that's it. Now, that's partially because the other participants knew to stay quiet, but there was also something really special about the way the raid leader said, Hey, if this is going on, call it out. The raid leader granted other players the authority to speak under other conditions. The way that the raid leader encoded the message, point the second, 
He said allure of flames or allure. Didn't use uh, an acronym, didn't use shorthand to describe things. It was a lot easier for the other players to understand if it's using terms that are more complete or at least more understood. Why is your healer ignoring you? Because you're saying things like, heal me. Cool. Who's me? If the healer isn't familiar with your voice or where you are or anything else about you, then you can't expect them to heal you. Instead, say, heal Matsudano. Heal Dandadan. Make it less work for the healer. And the third point in that video, high utility messages. Again, apologies that we can't see it, but. There wasn't a, we have, uh, people coming in. there wasn't any ambiguity in the instructions that the raid leader was giving. If you're, what was it, uh, if you're a hunter, eat it yourself. All right, tanks, switch over to this thing. High utility messages that required very little work in decoding, that raid leader should be a professional. That was exquisite. Chef kiss. Do we at least, uh, I guess we're gonna find out if we have audio, which is the most important part of any Overwatch example. <laughs> I've also never played Overwatch. And I've tried really hard to both play and to find clips of Overwatch that wasn't pure cacophony. And I couldn't find any. <laughs> but I was able to find someone from Action Esports uh, they did part of an interview where uh, they were talking to pro players and they're talking about shot calling. Again, in the interest of time, we are going to try to keep going while we fix the video here. And actually, I am going to take a, a hot second break to, uh, because I just realized that even though, even if the audio comes through, it's not in English. <laughs> Subtitles are helpful. That is an encoding issue, yes. Look, even if things aren't going perfectly, it's MAGFest. Must be happy to be here, man. I'm happy to see you. We're gonna give it one minute here just to see if we can and we said it's still coming through on stream? Who's there? I do. Kale pizza is uh, actually one of my favorite things to eat. Um, it's, it has the illusion of being healthy which is very useful for, for someone like me. All right, if we can't um, get this audio, what I am gonna do is describe it to you, I guess. I'm sorry. Shot calling. I did promise you how to be a, a perfect shot caller every time, right? Well, the answer is you can't be one. Because there are a couple of different strategies for being a shot caller, especially in a competitive FPS like Overwatch. You can have a distributed shot calling method or a centralized shot calling method. Distributed being all players or a group of players can, can call out locations and, and, um, and which route to take and X, Y, Z. Centralized being you have one. Are you cloning your display right now? Or is, is that coming It's coming time? through. Oh, look. Wait a second. We got something. If this works now, I'm going to be so happy. Hey! <laughs> Shout outs to Mag Tech Ops. 
We're actually not doing terrible on time, so we are going to keep going with this. And now you're actually going to see and hear what happens in Overwatch. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, 혼자만 그 말을 하게 되면은 그 혼자 말하는 사람이 좀 부담감을 많이 느껴서 제대로 된 플레이도 할수 없고 그렇게 힘든데 다 같이 말아서 모이면은 좀더 생각도 잘 모이고 더잘 되는 것 같아요. 어, 일단 한 명이 메인 오더를 맡아서 오더를 하는 경우에는 제 방향성이 확실해지고 팀원님 모두 하나로 단합할 수는 있지만 만약에 그 메인 오더가 잘못된 오더를 내렸을 때뭐 팀이 전체적으로 한 번에 무너질 수 있는 거? I think with a central shot caller, um, you kind of you have you have less of that overcrowding, uh, so you might have you might have a cl clearer comms, quieter, uh, calmer comms, but then you you kind of limit yourself in that. You can't always see everything, right? They only have one perspective. Um, so you're, you're limiting your field of view to one person only, and they may not, they're not going to see everything. It's not even like a question of might not see everything, they're not going to see anything, or everything rather. You generally have your main tanks, your main supports, calling the strategy of the game and thinking about the overall uh, tendency because main support is one of the easy ones that you can have a better macro view of everything, and main tank is the person who essentially is doing things first. He's the one making the decisions, he's the one that's moving first and everyone has to follow him. So the communication and how much you communicate within each role is dependent on team and player, but for the most time it sticks to that kind of template. We got it. Centralized or uh, distributed shot calling, Central's gonna have less noise, but also less information distributed the exact opposite problem. And this is how to be the best shot caller is it depends. You're gonna to need to know your role. You're gonna to need to know your team. You're gonna to need to know the opponent. You're gonna to need to know the circumstances of play. Your communication strategy as an individual or as a team is gonna to have to be dynamic. It has to be because there is no one-size-fits-all solution. So I promised you takeaways. I promised you how to be a better communicator and it's really only three things you need to do. Express clearly. Keep the channel clean. Repetition, don't do it, just don't. And choose the right channel. Express specifically. Make it so that the person hearing you is doing the least amount of work. Use as much detail as you can to try and, and paint a picture for them. And listen intently. Assume positive intent. Foster that connection. Cultivate it. Nurture it. Is it more important to be right or to be connected? I started off with three takeaways, but Dan to Dan reminded me of the most important one. Have fun. It's a game. It's your friends. Be good to each other. Oh, we're not done yet, because speaking of fun, I wanted to just give a huge shout out to these three games too, because they just have super cool communication systems that I think are really neat. Elden Ring, game of the year, it deserved it. It uses a text-based system, but it's uh, templated and a limited choice of words. So, behold dog becomes a meme to describe almost any animal, but especially turtles. The system of communication is going to govern how we communicate and working within those limits. It's just a truly fascinating thing, the kind of creative solutions that come from it. Creative solution also includes things like keep talking and nobody explodes. This is a co-op game where one person is disarming a bomb, either in VR or on console or something, and the other person is reading a bomb defusal manual. Lots of yelling, lots of shouting. Uh, it's, it's a great exercise if you have a partner that you can play it with, I highly recommend it. And when I did this uh, panel in uh, Seattle for SakuraCon, Somebody told me about this game called Hell Let Loose. And it has a, a very intentionally designed communication system 
where the officer of a, it's a 50 person team, 50 versus 50, the officer in charge of a unit can interact with other officers and commanders, but those smaller units only get to interact with each other either based on proximity or in their squad. So there's a natural chain of command that comes about as part of the communication system. I think it's really, really cool. But the model isn't perfect. It does miss out on something. What? You're going to get your endpoints later. Why? Why do we communicate? Well, there are three different approaches to communication. And th again, this stays in gaming or in uh, everyday life. Three approaches that we might take depending on the circumstances. And those circumstances are a shared common interest, a mutual interest, or a competing interest. Common interest is going to be a lot of your co-op games like um, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes or Overcooked 2. I love Overcooked. It's fantastic. Another one that you absolutely need to play with a partner. Mutual interest is where Mario Party establishes and destroys friendships. Mario Party's fun, man. But it's, it's that idea of an asymmetric thing where I don't want you to win, but I also don't want them to win. So I'm going to win and lose, and you're going to win and lose. Competing interest, I'm not sure how prevalent this is anymore, but it's your 1v1 me, bruh. <laughs> it's, your, it's your chirping. It's your trash talking. It's trying to get into your opponent's head because you don't want them to win. Their win is your loss. Now, pair up if you want. We have a, a completely optional exercise. If you want to pair up, you can. If you don't want to, uh, we're going to do our best to try to illustrate the exercise, but please, I welcome you to, and there are definitely endpoints in it for you, I promise. Here's the scenario. There are two doctors, Dr. Jones and Dr. Rowland, and they each need a supply of a fruit called the ugly orange. I have all of it. You're going to need to work with your partner and figure out who gets the oranges, how many of them. There are two sheets of paper up in the front of the room, one in yellow, one in blue. With your partner, come up, grab one of each. One of you is going to be the yellow, one of you is going to be the blue. Come on. Get it? Hurry, we're almost done. You don't, you don't need to grab the markers. Um, this is actually my first time trying, to, trying it with the markers, but uh, we'll find out. Okay. So. You're going to get, uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes to read your sheet. What's important is that you read yours. You cannot read your partner's. You can only read yours, which is an instruction I realize I should have given in the first place so that you're not just like, hey, check this out. What's yours say? What's mine say? You each have a role to play. Take a minute to read it. And then you're going to get five minutes to negotiate with each other. And yes, there will be background music. While you're communicating with your uh, alternate, think back to the model. Think back to the mechanics. You're an expert in communication now. So what kind of negotiation do you need to make to be successful? I promised you background music. I'm giving you background music. 
got five minutes. I realize it's a tight window, but try to have an answer by the time time runs up. Two minutes left. Again, try to have an answer. One minute left. Every orange that you don't get is an orange your opponent gets. Think about it. Feeling confident, I think. Fifteen seconds. And time. Give me a 
thumbs up, thumbs down how you think you did. Thumbs up, lots of thumbs up. I see a thumb like, eh. Wait, I got one that's a thumbs up and one that's a thumbs down? That's a, that's a good partnership right there. Are, are y'all friends or did you just meet now? Yes. I love MAGFest. I want to hear, did anybody have a 50-50 split? Okay. Um, tell me in a few words how you came to a 50-50 split. And I'll read it back into the mic. Mitigate damage. So if you can cut the damage in half for both parties involved, you're minimizing what you can. That's, that's the approach you took. Did anybody do something that was like, um, like a 60-40 or an 80-20 split? Nothing like that? Any other 50-50s? Mm -hmm. You were attempting a 50-50. The time limit does have a function here. It's sort of designed to, to trip you up a little bit, but it's also supposed to represent that you're not going to get all the time in the world when you are confronted with a problem like this. Did anybody get uh, one, one person gets all 3,000 and somebody gets zero? Uh, let's hear from you over here. Uh, a few words or less. Got it. So as an animal scientist, you decided that the, the puppies and the dogs that were sick, less important than the environment. Uh, let's hear from you. Secretly doctor friends. <laughs> My notes are missing. No, you did it. You did it the way you're supposed to. Dr. Rollins, go to paragraph five, line two. Dr. Joneses, go to paragraph four, line two. What part of the orange do you need? You need the juice. You can share. You got, did you get that? I love it. I love it when people get it. <laughs> the point is, there's this quote by Buckminster Fuller that I really take to heart. And he says, when I'm working on a problem, I never think about beauty, but when I have finished, if the solution is not beautiful, I know it is wrong. That's something that we just experienced here with the ugly orange. This is something closer to an ethos than like an academic principle, which is what we were talking about. But I really believe in this, that we don't always have to be competitors. That we don't have to compromise more than we think we should. That we can all get everything that we need if we can only know how to ask for it. My name is Dano. And you still haven't heard of me, but I am super grateful for MAGFest, for you, for Tech Ops for getting this on. Thank you so much.